That's a clan here for Kerr Maths. Today we're going to go through the whole trigonometry in the higher maths 2023 exams. That includes the addition or double angle formula, the trigonometric identities, the wave functions, trigonometric equations, and trigonometric graphs. Let's go. Basically, higher maths 2015, paper one, question 10, addition and double angle formulae, given that tan 2x is three quarters. Part A, find cos 2x. Right, okay, so part A, we know tan 2x is equal to three quarters. So that means we can draw a right angle triangle and we could call this angle 2x. And opposite is three and adjacent is four. By Pythagoras, three squared plus four squared is five squared. This is a standard Pythagorean triple. So we can immediately write down cos 2x because that is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is four fifths. So a simple one mark question there. Part B, we have to work out cos x. Well, we can't go from cos 2x to cos x directly. Don't be tempted to divide by 2. We need to expand cos 2x. So there's the start of the exam paper. There's a number of trigonometric identities. Pick the one you want. 2 cos squared x minus 1 would work. So I'm going to pick 2 cos squared x minus 1. And cos squared x is the same as cos x squared, remember. So we know cos 2x is 4 fifths, so we've set up an equation basically, because that equals 4 fifths. So that means that I can add 1 to both sides to get 2 cos squared x. Well, if I add 1, it's the same as adding 5 fifths, so 5 and 4 is 9. That gives me 9 fifths. So cos squared x dividing through by 2 is 9 over 10. And therefore cos x is the square root of 9 tenths. So I can write that down, cos x is the square root of 9 tenths. Well, from the rules of thirds, I can split that up into two square roots, the square root of 9 over the square root of 10, so that's 3 over root 10. Square root of 9 is 3, and root 10 is already a simplified third. And we'll just define the exact value of cos x, so we've done that, so we're done. Integrating a trig function which also ties in with the chain rule. So we've got x squared high maths 2015, paper 2, question 7. Part A, find the integral of 3 cos 2x add 1. So we've got the integral of 3 cos 2x plus 1 dx. You don't need to give yourself a headache here. If you check the start of the exam paper, it tells you about the integral cos, you get sine. So I know what that's going to give me sine. So we've got 3 sine 2x. The 1 integrates 2x, but we'll get there in a minute because... You need to be careful here. This is not cos x, it's cos 2x, so the chain will apply. So you differentiate 2x to get 2, and you then divide by it. So it's divided by 2. And now I can integrate the 1, so it's plus x, and then I've got a plus c on the end. So just tidying that up a little bit, I could write that as 3 over 2, sine 2x plus x plus c. And we're done there. Part B says show that 3 cos 2x add 1 equals 4 cos squared x minus 2 sine squared x. So it's a trigonometric question. We have to use our cos 2x expansion from the start of the exam paper. So part B, 3 cos 2x plus 1. I'm going to try and make that look like the right hand side. So cos 2x, I'm going to expand to cos squared x minus sine squared x. And that's still plus 1. So that's 3 cos squared x minus 3 sine squared x plus 1. Let's see what we're trying to make it look like. Well, there's no actual 1 in the question, so we're going to change 1 in a funny way, because 1 is sine squared x plus cos squared x. So taking that 1 out, we get 3 cos squared x minus 3 sine squared x plus sine squared x, plus cos squared x. 3 cos squared x plus cos squared x is 4 cos squared x, and minus 3 plus 1 is minus 2 sine squared x. And we should be done there. Okay, part C integrate sine squared x minus 2 cos squared x dx. We're going to use our result that we just found out, because that looks very similar to this result. So let's have a look at what this result was. It was 3 cos 2x add 1. So as an aside, 3 cos 2x plus 1 was equal to 4 cos squared x 
minus 2 sine squared x. If I divide this by 2 then, I would get 2 cos squared x minus sine squared x. So let's just do that to start with, just so you can see what's happening. Divide by 2 on both sides. We would get 3 over 2 cos 2x minus a plus a half equals 2 cos squared x minus sine squared x. But this is um, the opposite signs on, on here. So if I then divide through by minus 1, or move everything to the left-hand side, I suppose, there's another way to think of it. Then you get minus 3 over 2 cos 2x minus a half equals minus cos squared x minus 2 cos squared x plus sine squared x, which is exactly what I'm trying to integrate. So if I can, I can integrate my left-hand side. So my integral becomes the integral of minus 3 over 2 cos 2x minus a half dx. So that equals minus 3 over 2 cos goes to sine, so sine 2x. And you need to differentiate the 2x to get 2 and divide by 2. So I'm dividing the whole thing by 2. A half minus a half goes to minus a half x and we've got plus c. Dividing a fraction by a number means I can just times the denominators. So we get minus 3 sine 2x over 4 minus a half of x plus c. And we're done there. S Grey High Maths 2015, paper 2, question 9 for the addition and double angle formula. The winds of a turbine are turning at a steady rate. The height h of the tip of one of the blades above the ground at any time t seconds is given by the formula. Express 36 sine 1.5t minus 15 cos 1.5t in the form k sine 1.5t minus a. So we can write 36 sine 1.5t minus 15 cos of 1.5t equals, well, k sine 15t minus a. k sine 1.5t, sorry, minus a. So expanding the right-hand side, that's going to equal k sine 1.5t cos a minus k sine a cos 1.5t. If we look at what's in front of sine 1.5t here, we get 36. So 36 equals what's in front of sine 1.5t on this side, k cos a. And similarly, looking at what's in front of cos 1.5t on this side is minus 15. And in front of cos 1.5t on this side is minus k sine a. To rewrite that nice, more nicely then, I can say that k cos a equals 36 and k sine a equals 15. And now we're ready to get our k because sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. That means our k squared will be 36 squared plus 15 squared. So in other words, k is equal to the square root of 36 squared plus 15 squared, a bit like Pythagoras. So that is the square root of 1521. Use your calculator to verify that. And the square root of 1521 is 9, 39. So we know that k is equal to 39. And also we can work out our a because sine divided by cos is tan. So since tan a is sine a over cos a, I can write tan a is equal to 15 over 36. So I can find the inverse tan of 15 over 36. Inverse tan of 15 over 36, making sure my calculator is in radians, is 0 0.395. And now I just need to check which quadrant our angle is in. So drawing a cast diagram would help with this. Now remember, we're going back and looking at what cos and sine were. Well, we're both positive. So cos was positive, so that's A and C. 
and sine is positive, so that's A and C. So I'm in the first quadrant, so that means that A equals 0 0.395. And therefore, to answer our question, we get 39 sine 1.5t minus 0 0.395. And we're done there. So to follow on this question, it then says, and hence find the two values which tip a blade is at a height of 100 metres above the ground during the first turn. So we've just expressed this in this form, but then you've got plus 65 on the end. So we can just write that again, plus 65, and that's going to equal 100. So I'll go ahead and do that. So that means, I'll just call this part 2, our h equals 39 sine 1.5t minus 0 0.395 plus 65, and that's going to equal 100. So we've just got an equation to solve now. That means I can take 39 with 65 across, so we get 39 sine 1.5t minus 0 0.395 equals 35. So dividing through by 39, we get sine 1.5t minus 0 0.395 equals 35 over 39. So at this point, I can find the inverse sine of 35 over 39 using a calculator and get a value. The inverse sine of 35 over 39 is 1.114. And looking at our cast diagram, sine is positive, so it's in the first and second quadrant, so that's pi minus the answer. So we can also do pi minus 1.114 to get a second solution and that is going to be 2.03. So that means we can say that this whole, the whole of this equals that and the whole of this equals that and solve for t. So 1.5t minus 0 0.395 equals 1.114 and 1.5t minus 0 0.395 equals 2.03. So solving the first equation, 1.5t adding 0 0.395, we get 1.509. And therefore t is 1.509 divided by 1.5, 1.006. There's our first solution. And our second solution, 1.5t equals 2.03 plus 0 0.395, which is 2.425. And therefore, T dividing through by 1.5, 1.617. Just put my units in here, so that's seconds and that's seconds. And we're done there. SQA High Maths. 2018, paper one, question 13, double angle formula and addition formula. The right angle triangle in the diagram is such that sine x is 2 over root 11. Find the exact value of sine 2x. Well, sine 2x is 2 sine x cos x. So I can write that, 2 sine x cos x. So I need to know my cos x, so let's go back to the triangle. Pythagoras to get this inside, so I've got root 11 squared, which is 11, minus 2 squared, which is 4. 11 minus 4, 10, 9, 8, 7. So the missing side is the square root of 7. So that means I've got cos x is equal to root 7 over root 11. So that's 2 times 2 over root 11 times root 7 over root 11. 2 times 2 is 4, so I get 4 root 7 on the top. Root 11 times root 11 is just 11. So 4 root 7 over 11. So for part 2, cos 2x is 2 cos squared x minus 1 using the start of the formula seat. So that's 2 times, well, cos x, remember, was root 7 over root 11. I'm going to square that and then take away 1. That's 2 times root 7 squared is 7, root 11 squared is 11, minus 1. 2 sevens is 14 over 11. Take away 1. 14 over 11, take away 1. So take away 11, basically, is 3 elevenths. So we get 3 over 11 as our answer for part 2. Part B, by expressing sine 3x as sine 2x plus x, find the exact value. So sine 2x plus x, this is the addition formula now. So start of the exam paper, sine 2x 
cos x plus cos 2x sin x. Now we've already worked out sin 2x and cos 2x at the top, so just using our answers, sin 2x is 4 root 7 over 11. Cos x was root 7 over root 11. Plus cos 2x was 3 elevenths. And sin x, we already know is 2 over root 11. So putting that together, we get 4 on the top. Root 7 times root 7 is just 7. Over 11 times root 11. Plus 3 times 2 is 6. Over 11 root 11. 4 sevens is 28. Over 11 root 11 plus 6 over 11 root 11. That's the common denominator, so I can just add them straight away. 28 and 6 is 34 over 11 root 11. And we could just leave our answer there. SQ High Maths 2019, paper 1, question 13. Angle and double angle formula. ABC and ADE are both right angle. P and Q are shown in the diagram. You have to find cos P and cos Q. So for cos P, I'm going to need adjacent over hypotenuse. And for cos Q, I'm going to need adjacent over hypotenuse. So if I draw both these triangles out, I can work out the missing sides. So for the first triangle, where P is, I've got 1 in root 5. So I can do root 5 squared minus 1 squared, which is 5 minus 1, which is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. So I've got 2 on this side for the P. Similar rule of the Q, I'll draw it as it looks. Q, I've got a big long side, and there's Q there, and it tells us the hypotenuse is root 10. It tells us the other side is 1, but then we don't need Pythagoras because we've got 1 right here, and then an extra 2 to make 3, because we've just worked it out, so this is 3. And now we can start answering the question, cos P is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, so 2 root 5. In part 2, cos q is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, so 3 over root 10. Part 2 says, hence determine the value of sine p plus q. So for part b, we've got sine p plus q. So that's an, ang an addition angle formula from the start of the exam paper. It is sine p cos q plus cos p sine q. And then we just substitute our values in. So we've not got a sine p and a sine q. So we need to work out our sine p and sine q. So let me just do that underneath. Our sine p is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So 1 over root 10, 5. Sine q is equal to 1 over root 10. So now we can substitute our values in. Being very careful we get them in the correct order. So we've got sine p first, 1 over root 5, cos q, 3 over root 10, plus cos p, 2 over root 5, plus sine q, which is 1 over root 10. Multiplying the top, we get 3, and then root 5 times root 10 is root 50, plus 2 over root 50. That gives me 5 over root 50, but all answers at higher maths need to be simplified. So I need to simplify that root 50 if I can, which you can, because it's root 2 times root 25. 25 times 2, which is giving you 5 over 5 times root 2. 5's cancel to give you 1 left on the top and root 2 on the bottom. So it's 1 over root 2, and you're done there. SQA 2022 Higher Maths Paper 1, Question 7. Triangles ABC and ADE are both right angles. It tells us that angle BAC equals Q and DAE -E -D -E equals R. As shown in the diagram, calculate sine R, sine Q. So we can pull some information out of this diagram by drawing some triangles. So let me draw the small one first. If I do a little sketch, we've got R here. This whole length here is 3, and the whole length on the top is 1. So by Pythagoras, 3 squared plus 1 squared equals 10. So that must be the square root of 10. We're going to do the same for the Q triangle. If I just do that at the side, 
if I call this Q, then on the hypotenuse we've got root 13, and on the bottom we've got 2, so by Pythagoras, root 13 squared minus 2 squared is 13 minus 4, which is 9, so the square root of 9 is 3. So nice and simple then, determine the value of sine r. Sine r, opposite of the hypotenuse, is 1 over root 10. And sine q, opposite of the hypotenuse, is 3 over root 13. Two marks there. 1, 2. Nothing else you're going to go do there, so let's go to part B. Okay, let's determine the value of sine q minus r. Sine q minus r equals sine q cos r minus cos q sine r. From the start of the exam paper, you'll get that. So we need to work out our different things. So sine q is 3 over root 13. Well, cos r, well, we've already got r triangle here, so 3 over root 10. And minus cos q, which using this triangle is 2 over root 13. And we've got sine r, which we already know is 1 over root 10. Times in the tops of them, we get 9 over root 130 minus 2 over root 130, which is obviously 7 over square root of 130. Always double check if you can simplify that third at the end, but you can, and you don't have to rationalise the denominator for the marks, because we're not examining that. So where do you get your marks for part B? If you go down sine Q cos R minus cos Q sine R, or you imply that by doing this, you get your marks. So there's mark 1 and 2. Substituting in, 3 over root 13, 3 over root 10, minus 2 over root 13, times 1 over root 10 is your second mark. And then your final mark, obviously, for working it out as 7 over root 130. So there's your final mark there. Integrating a trig function, which also ties in with the chain rule. So we've got SQA High Maths 2015, paper 2, question 7. Part A, find the integral of 3 cos 2x add 1. So We've got the integral of 3 cos 2x plus 1 dx. You don't need to give yourself a headache here. You check the start of the exam paper and it tells you if you integrate cos, you get sine. So I know what that's going to give me sine. So we've got 3 sine 2x. The 1 integrates 2x, but we'll get there in a minute because you need to be careful here. This is not cos x, it's cos 2x, so the chain will apply, so that you differentiate 2x to get 2, and you then divide by it, so it's divided by 2. And now I can integrate by 1, so it's plus x, and then I've got a plus c on the end. So just tidying that up a little bit, I could write that as 3 over 2, sine 2x plus x plus c. And we're done there. Part B says show that 3 cos 2x add 1 equals 4 cos squared x minus 2 sine squared x. So it's a trigonometric question. We have to use our cos 2x expansion from the start of the exam paper. So part B, 3 cos 2x plus 1. I'm going to try and make that look like the right hand side. So cos 2x, I'm going to expand to cos squared x minus sine squared x. And that's still plus 1. So that's 3 cos squared x minus 3 sine squared x plus 1. Let's see what we're trying to make it look like. Well, there's no actual 1 in the question, so we're going to change 1 in a funny way, because 1 is sine squared x plus cos squared x. So taking that 1 out, we get 3 cos squared x minus 3 sine squared x plus sine squared x, plus cos squared x. 3 cos squared x plus cos squared x is 4 cos squared x, and minus 3 plus 1 is minus 2 sine squared x. And we should be done there. Okay, part C integrate sine squared x minus 2 cos squared x dx. We're going to use our 
result that we just found out because that looks very similar to this result. So let's have a look at what this result was. It was 3 cos 2x add 1. So as I said, 3 cos 2x plus 1 was equal to 4 cos squared x minus 2 sine squared x. If I divide this by 2 then, I would get 2 cos squared x minus sine squared x. So let's just do that to start with, just so you can see what's happening. Divide by 2 on both sides. We would get 3 over 2 cos 2x minus a plus a half equals 2 cos squared x minus sine squared x. But this is um, the opposite signs on, on here. So if I then divide through by minus 1, or move everything to the left hand side I suppose, there's another way to think of it, then you get minus 3 over 2 cos 2x minus a half equals minus cos squared x minus 2 cos squared x plus sine squared x, which is exactly what I'm trying to integrate. So if I can, I can integrate my left hand side. So my integral becomes the integral of minus 3 over 2 cos 2x minus a half dx. So that equals minus 3 over 2 cos goes to sine, so sine 2x. And you need to differentiate with 2x to get 2 and divide by 2. So I'm dividing the whole thing by 2. A half minus a half goes to minus a half x and we've got plus c. Dividing a fraction by a number means I can just times the denominators. So we get minus 3 sine 2x over 4 minus a half of x plus c. And we're done there. For the a trig function, this could be higher maths 2016, paper 2, question 11. Show that sine 2x tan x equals 1 minus cos 2x and then differentiate sine 2x tan x. So part A, sine 2x tan x, well, we can change sine 2x to 2 sine x cos x and we can change tan x into sine x over cos x. So that gives me 2 sine squared x and the cos x obviously cancel. So then as an aside, remember we've got a cos 2x on the right hand side. Well, cos 2x, using the expansion with sine squared x in it, is 1 minus 2 sine squared x. So we can rearrange that to get what sine squared x is. That means that 2 sine squared x, moving over to the right, equals 1 minus cos 2x. as required. Part B, f of x is equal to 1 minus cos 2x now. So f dash x, differentiating each function, 1 goes to 0. Cos, remember, goes to minus sine, so it becomes plus sine, so it's sine 2x because of minus minus. And then we need to, because of a chain rule, differentiate the inner function, which is 2, so times by 2. So we get 2 sine 2x. S degree higher maths 2017 paper 2 question 11 trigonometric identities. Part A. Show that sine 2x over 2 cos x minus sine x cos squared x equals sine cubed x. So the way to deal with these is just keep it separate. Start dealing with the left and start making it equal to the right hand side. You may have to manipulate the right hand side separately as well so you get two different things equal. But in this case probably not. So let's look at the left hand side, we've got sine 2x, we can write that as 2 sine x cos x, just using the start of the exam paper, over 2 cos x, and then we've got minus sine x cos squared x. So we can cancel the 2s, and we can cancel the cos x's from here, so that leaves just sine x for this one, minus sine x times cos squared x. Sine x is a common factor in this case, so that gives me sine x bracket 
1 minus cos squared x, and if you're paying attention, you'll realize that 1 minus cos squared x is also equal to sine squared x. Just check the, the exam paper. Sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. So that means I can say that that is sine x times sine squared x, which is equal to sine cubed x, as required. Okay, part B. Hence, differentiate sine 2x over 2 cos x minus sine x cos squared x between 0 and pi over 2. So if we're going to differentiate that, we can just differentiate the right-hand side because it's equal to it. So for part B, d by dx of the left-hand side equals d by dx of what we just found out, sine cubed x. Now, sine cubed x, remember, means the sine of x squared. So it's easier to write it like that to see exactly what you're doing. So if I just write sine of x, that's to be cubed. So I have to differentiate sine x all cubed. So that's the chain rule. So the chain rule says I take the power down to the front, I leave the function alone, so it's sine x, and then I take one away from the power, so that's squared. But then I need to differentiate the inner function, which is sine x. Check the start of the exam paper, sine x goes to cos x, so times by cos x. Tidying that up, that's 3 sine squared x cos x. And we're done. Next, we have maths 2019, paper 1, question 17. Express sine x minus cos x squared in this form, and then find the integral. So it's p plus q sine rx. I'm just going to assume we need to expand the bracket. I think you should too. So we've got sine x minus cos x times sine x minus cos x. That equals sine squared x. Sine x times minus cos x, and then minus cos x times minus sine x is minus two lots of sine x and cos x. And then minus times a minus is a plus, so plus cos squared x. But we know that sine squared plus cos squared equals 1, so we get 1 minus 2 sine x cos x. We're almost there. There's no cos in this at all. But look at the start of the exam paper. Sine 2x is 2 sine x cos x. So that is equal to 1 minus sine 2x. Have we got it in that form? Well, p is 1, q is just 1 or minus 1, and r is just 2. So, yep, yeah, we're done. Hence, find the integral of that. So, that means for part b, we can do the integral of 1 minus sine 2x dx, and that's just the chain rule. Integrate 1, you get x, minus sine integrates to cos, so plus cos. 2x, but then we need to times by the 2x differentiated, so times a half, because we divided by the differentiated. Then plus c, so that is equal to just x plus a half of cos 2x plus c, and we're done there. S Gray High Maths 2015, paper 2, question 9 for the addition and double angle formula. The ones of a turbine are turning at a steady rate. The height h of the tip of one of the blades above the ground at any time t seconds is given by the formula. Express 36 sine 1.5t minus 15 cos 1.5t in the form k sine 1.5t minus a. So we can write 36 sine 1.5t minus 15 cos of 1.5t equals, well, k sine 15t minus a. K sine 1.5t, sorry, minus a. So expanding the right-hand side, that's going to equal k sine 1.5t cos a minus k sine a cos 1.5t. If we look at what's in front of sine 1.5t here, we get 36. So 36 equals what's in front of sine 1.5t on this side, k cos a. And similarly, looking at what's in front of 
cos 1.53 on this side is minus 15. And in front of cos 1.5t on this side is minus k sin a. To rewrite that nice, more nicely then, I can say that k cos a equals 36 and k sin a equals 15. And now we're ready to get our k because sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. That means our k squared will be 36 squared plus 15 squared. So in other words, k is equal to the square root of 36 squared plus 15 squared, a bit like Pythagoras. So that is the square root of 1521. Use your calculator to verify that. And the square root of 1521 is 9, 39. So we know that k is equal to 39. And also we can work out our a because sine divided by cos is tan. So since tan a is sine a over cos a, I can write tan a is equal to 15 over 36. So I can find the inverse tan of 15 over 36. Inverse tan of 15 over 36, making sure my calculator is in radians, is 0 0.395. And now I just need to check which quadrant our angle is in. So drawing a cast diagram would help with this. Now remember, we're going back and looking at what cos and sine were. Well, we're both positive. So cos was positive, so that's A and C, and sine is positive, so that's A and C. So I'm in the first quadrant, so that means that A equals 0 0.395. And therefore, to answer our question, we get 39 sine 1.5t minus 0 0.395. And we're done there. So to follow on this question, it then says, and hence find the two values which tip a blade is at a height of 100 metres above the ground during the first turn. So we've just expressed this in this form, but then you've got plus 65 on the end. So we can just write that again, plus 65, and that's going to equal 100. So I'll go ahead and do that. So that means, I'll just call this part 2, our h equals 39 sine 1.5t minus 0 0.395 plus 65, and that's going to equal 100. So we've just got an equation to solve now. That means I can take 39 with 65 across, so we get 39 sine 1.5t minus 0 0.395 equals 35. So dividing through by 39, we get sine 1.5t minus 0 0.395 equals 35 over 39. So at this point, I can find the inverse sine of 35 over 39 using a calculator and get a value. The inverse sine of 35 over 39 is 1.114. And looking at our cast diagram, sine is positive, so it's in the first and second quadrant, so that's pi minus the answer. So we can also do pi minus 1.114 to get a second solution and that is going to be 2.03 so that means we can say that this whole, the whole of this equals that and the whole of this equals that and solve for t so 1.5 t minus 0 0.395 equals 1.114 and 1.5 t minus 0 0.395 equals 2.03. So solving the first equation, 1.5t adding 0 0.395, we get 1.509. And therefore t is 1.509 divided by 1.5, 1.006. There's our first solution. And our second solution, 1.5t equals 2.03 plus 0 0.395, which is 2.425. And therefore, t dividing through by 1.5, 1.617. Just put my units in here, so that's seconds and that's seconds. And we're done there. We the functions, SV High Maths 2017, paper one, question 14. First part was a trig question, and then it moved on to having to draw a graph. So for part A, using our knowledge of trig, we have got root 3 sine x minus cos x 
and with the rate at end of form key sin x minus e. So we expand that using the formula sheet. That's key sin x cos e minus key cos x sin e. Okay, so then we would, we would just uh, write, equate the parts to each other. So if we look at the sin x, first of all, we've got k sin x cos a. So that means that k cos a equals root 3. So I can just write that. k cos a equals root 3. And similarly, looking at the cos x part, which is over here, we've got minus k sin a equals minus 1. So we can just write k sin a equals 1. k sin a equals 1. So that means that our k, because sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1, gives us the square root of root 3 squared plus 1 squared. So that is the square root of 3 plus 1, which is the square root of 4, which is 2. So our k equals 2. And then to get your a, so to get our a, remember sine divided by cos is tan, so I can write tan a is equal to the sine, which is 1 over the cos, which is root 3. So that's an exact value for tan a, because we've got a right angle triangle, and if you had 60 here and 30 here, you would have 2, 1 and root 3. So the tan of 30 is 1 over root 3. We need to use a cast diagram just to confirm. So if we look at our cast diagram, we need to check our original functions. Cos was positive. So that would be these two. And sine was positive. That would be these two. So yes, we're in the first quadrant. Because I've got two ticks in A. So that means I can just say, therefore, A equals 30 degrees. And then our final answer is 2 sine x minus 30 degrees. And we're done there. So for part B, we have to draw the graph, but we've already put it in this form. So we're just going to draw the graph of y equals 2 sine x minus 30. So I know my amplitude is 2, so it's going to go between 2 and minus 2. And minus 30 tells me that it's shifted to the right by 30 degrees. So drawing a nice sketch of that, I can note on the y-axis the points 2 and minus 2. And then we're going to start at 30 degrees because we've shifted along. So we can just start drawing our graph and stop about there because it's not, it only goes up to 360. We can note our turning point. So normally it goes along in 90, but shifted to the right by 30 means that this point is 120. So 122. And similarly, this is usually 270 on a sine graph, so an extra 30 makes 300. So we've got 300 and 2. Uh, the other thing we could do is make sure you go back to 0, so you have to draw what's going to happen here. So it's just going to continue. We could know, notice where it cuts the y-axis. So it's going to cut the y-axis here, which is when x is 0. If you put 0 into this, you get the sine of minus 30, which is minus a half, times 2 is minus 1. So you could note minus 1 there. And there you go, you've drawn a sketch of the graph. You could tidy that up a little bit there. 2019 is already filmed. 2015 is already filmed. 17 is already filmed. It's going to be high on maths. 2018, paper 2, question 8. The wave function, part a expressed 2 cos x minus sine x in the form k cos x minus a. Okay, a quite standard question here. If we have to express it as k cos x minus a, I expand k cos x minus a and then equate both sides. So for part a, I can write 2 cos x minus sine x equals, start of the exam paper, k cos x minus a is k cos x cos a. And then it becomes plus k sine x sine a because k is times everything. You could have like k bracket that, then expand the bracket, but it's quite easy to do it that way. So looking at what, in, what is in front of our cos x, on this side in front of cos x and attached to it is k cos a, and on this side, it's just two. So I can immediately write k cos a equals two. And similarly, looking at our other sine x, 
that's attached to k sin a, and this sin x is attached to a minus, so a minus 1. So I can immediately write k sin a equals minus 1. And now we need to just get our k's and get our a's. So to get our k's, because sine squared plus cos squared equals 1, you can just write straight away that k is the square root of 2 squared plus minus 1 squared. Just like Pythagoras. That's the square root of 2 squared is 4 plus 1 squared is 1. That's root 5. So our k is root 5 and that's a simplified third. We'll now work on getting our a. Because sine divided by cos is tan, I'll show you that here, tan a is sine a over cos a. Tan a equals sine a is minus 1, or k sine a is minus 1, and k cos a is 2. But the k's cancel when you divide them, so you just get minus a half. So I need to do the inverse tan of a half. So the inverse tan of a half is 26.6 degrees. And then using our cast diagram to see which quadrant our angle is in. Now remember with this one, although it's tan A is negative, so you're tempted just to say T, S and C, it's to do with what sine and cos were. So sine was negative and cos was positive, so we tick for cos and sine. So when cos is positive, it's these two, and when sine is negative, it is these two, so it's in the fourth quadrant. So that means that our A degrees is equal to 360 minus 26.6, so A is equal to 333.4 degrees. And now we just write our answer as k cos x minus a. So our answer is root 5 cos x minus 333.4 degrees. And we're done there for part a. Part b, hence we'll always find the maximum and minimum value of 6 cos x minus 3 sin x. And then find the value for which it occurs between 0 and 360. Well, if you look at this one here, that times 3 gives you this one here. So if I just times my answer by 3 to part b, I can find the max and minimum values. Well, just the minimum. Part b, since it is three lots of it, I can say we've got 6 cos x minus 3 sin x degrees is equal to simply 3 times the answer we just got, which is root 5 cos x minus 333.4 degrees, because it's a multiple. Okay, minimum value of this, well, let's look at a cos graph in general. A normal cos graph goes between 1 and minus 1. This is the amplitude, so this one goes between 3 root 5 and minus 3 root 5. So straight away we can say that our minimum value is minus 3 root 5. So there's our first thing, and then we have to work out where it occurs. So, where does the minimum value normally occur? Well, usually it goes 90, 180, 270, 360. But this here, x minus 333.4, means it's been shifted to the right by 333.4. Now, if I shift from 180 to the right, it will take me outward for 360, so I need to find the next value. So you could just go up and then take away 360, or... If you imagine the cost graph with continuing behind me, that would be minus 180. So I can just do that shifted to the right. I would get 333.4 3, 3. minus 180. If I do that sum, I get 153.4. So it occurs at 153.4 degrees, and we're done there. Basically, higher maths 2019, paper 2, question 6. The wave function expressed 2 cos x minus 3 sin x in the form k cos x plus a. So if part A, quite standard stuff, 2 cos x minus 3 sin x, expand the right-hand side, that's k cos x cos a minus k sin x sin a. And you're just using the start of the exam paper to see that. So then we'll equate the sides. So looking at what's attached to cos x on this side, I've got k cos a and that's attached to cos x on this side by 2. And then on the other side, what's attached to sin x is k minus k sin a. 
and what's attached to sine x on this side is minus 3, or you could have just written k sine a is equal to 3, because minus minus on both sides. Okay, so we don't really need that one anymore. So then we find our k, so k is, remember, the square root of the two numbers, 2 squared plus 3 squared, that's because sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. So that means that k is the square root of 4 plus 9. So k is the square root of 13. Now we need to find our a. So because tan a is sine a over cos a, and the k's will cancel when you divide them, then that means that tan a is equal to 3 over 2, sine over cos. So you just get your calculator and work out the inverse tan of 3 over 2. Inverse tan of 3 over 2 is 56.3 degrees. And we just need to check if we're in the correct quadrant. We should be, because everything's positive, but just a double check. Cast the diagram. Always check and form your cos and sine. So your cos was positive and your sine was positive, which means positive cos, positive sine. You're in the first quadrant, and therefore A equals 56.3 degrees. Now we just write it in the correct form. So it's root 13, and it was cos x plus a, x plus 56.3 degrees. And we're done for part A. Part B, hence solve 2 cos x minus 3 sine x equals 3. Just check, is this side the same as that side? It's either going to be the same, or it'll be a multiple of this, which means you do a multiple of that. It is the same in this case, so we can just write our answer equals 3 and solve. So for part B, root 13 cos of x plus 56.3 degrees equals 3. So all we need to do is divide by root 13 to get cos of x plus 56.3. So that is 3 over root 13. And then we can do the inverse cos of 3 over root 13. So the inverse cos of 3 over root 13, using a calculator, gives you an answer of 33.7 degrees. Looking at our cast diagram, one more time, cos is positive, so it's in the first and fourth quadrant, so that's 360 minus. So our second answer is 360 minus 33.7 degrees which is equal to 326.3 degrees. Now, if our answer was just cos x here, that would be as done, but it's x plus 56.3, so we need to solve an equation. So we can then say, therefore, x plus 56.3 degrees equals 33.7 degrees. And that's our first answer. And our second one is going to be x plus... 56.3 degrees equals 326.3 degrees. Solving for x, the first one gives me minus 22.6 degrees, and the second one, taking away 56.3, gives you 270 degrees. So we can then say, final answer, x equals minus 22.6 degrees, 270 degrees, but minus 22.6 is out with a range where it was 0 and 360. So to get a another answer, we just take our lowest one and add 360 on. So 360 on from minus 22.6 is 337.4. Always check your range. And when, since that's out with a range, we just disregard that one, and that's our final answer. We've got express 4 sine x plus 5 cos x in the form k sine x at a, where k is greater than 0, and a is between 0 and 2 pi. Notice it's in radians, so I'll just work in radians for this question, and then we we'll have to solve the equation. Okay, let's do this. So part a, if I take k sine x at a, I can expand that straight away. Check the front exam paper if you're unsure, you'll get k sine x cos a plus k cos x sine a. 
So that means that 4 sin x plus 5 cos x equals k sin x cos a plus k cos x sin a. Well, 4 sin x, that's already got a sin x here, so that means that k cos a must equal 4. Similarly, we've got on this side cos x and this side cos x, so whatever's left, k sin a must equal 5. Sine divided by cos remembers tan, so if I divide at this moment in time, we'll get tan a straight away equals 5 over 4. We should check which quadrants a is going to be in. And we can do that by checking our original equations. This is positive, so we've got cos a. This is positive, so we've got sine and a. That means that the tan of this will only be positive on A because that's a, about to, the one that's ticked twice. So we're using the first quadrant, that's nice and easy, so we can work out A straight away. A is the inverse tan of 5 over 4. 0 0.896. So we've got our A. Now need to work out our K. But sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. So that means that 4 squared plus 5 squared equals k squared. So 4 squared plus 5 squared equals k squared. 16 plus 25 is k squared. So 41 equals k squared. Which means k must be the square root of 41. I'll just leave it as a third. As long as it's simplified, that's fine. Or you could just square root 41 in your calculator and you'll get 6.4. But better off with an exact value. So then just to answer the question, remember the question was expressed in the form k sine x add a. So as k sine x add a, we've got k sine x plus 0 0.896. Question 3b, hence solve 4 sine x plus 5 cos x equals 5.5 for x between 0 and 2 pi. So we've already worked out what we've got root 41 sine of x plus 0 0.896. That's our left hand side and that equals 5.5. So we can divide through by root 41 so that the sine of our angle plus 0 0.896 is just 5.5 over the square root of 41. So we can work out if what quadrants we should be in with our cast diagram. So sine is positive, so we're in the first quadrant and the second quadrant, which reminder is going to be pi minus our angle. So we now need to work out our angle using the inverse sine in a calculator of... 5.5 over root 41. If you do that in a calculator, you get 1.033. So in our first quadrant, that means that x plus 0 0.896, remember, equals 1.033. So taking away 0 0.896, we get x equals 0 0.137 as our first answer. Let's look at our second answer on our second quadrant. Remember that means that we've still got x plus 0 0.896, because that's our whole angle, but that equals pi minus, remember it was 1.033. So x must be the pi minus 1.033 minus 0 0.896 which gives us a second answer of 1.213. So we've got our two answers for x between 0 and 2 pi. Remember, I was working in radians there.
S Square High Mass 2015, Paper 2, Question 9 for the addition and double angle formula. The winds of a turbine are turning at a steady rate. The height h of the tip of one of the blades above the ground at any time t seconds is given by the formula. Express 36 sine 1.5t minus 15 cos 1.5t in the form k sine 1.5t minus a. So we can write 36 sine 1.5t minus 15 cos of 1.5t equals, well, k sine 15t minus a. k sine 1.5t, sorry, minus a. So expanding the right hand side, that's going to equal k sine 1.5t cos a minus k sine a cos 1.5t. If we look at what's in front of sine 1.5t here, we get 36. So 36 equals what's in front of sine 1.5t on this side, k cos a. And similarly, looking at what's in front of cos 1.5t on this side is minus 15. And in front of cos 1.5t on this side is minus k sine a. To rewrite that nice, more nicely then, I can say that k cos a equals 36 and k sine a equals 15. And now we're ready to get our k because sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. That means our k squared will be 36 squared plus 15 squared. So in other words, k is equal to the square root of 36 squared plus 15 squared, a bit like Pythagoras. So that is the square root of 1521. Use your calculator to verify that. And the square root of 1521 is 9, 39. So we know that k is equal to 39. And also we can work out our a because sine divided by cos is tan. So since tan a is sine a over cos a, I can write tan a is equal to 15 over 36. So I can find the inverse tan of 15 over 36. Inverse tan of 15 over 36, making sure my calculator is in radians, is 0 0.395. And now I just need to check which quadrant our angle is in. So drawing a cast diagram would help with this. Now remember, we're going back and looking at what cos and sine were. Well, we're both positive. So cos was positive, so that's A and C, and sine is positive, so that's A and C. So I'm in the first quadrant, so that means that A equals 0 0.395. And therefore, to answer our question, we get 39 sine 1.5t minus 0 0.395. And we're done there. So to follow on this question, it then says, and hence find the two values which tip a blade is at a height of 100 metres above the ground during the first turn. So we've just expressed this in this form, but then you've got plus 65 on the end. So we can just write that again, plus 65, and that's going to equal 100. So I'll go ahead and do that. So that means, I'll just call this part 2, our h equals 39 sine 1.5t minus 0 0.395 plus 65, and that's going to equal 100. So we've just got an equation to solve now. That means I can take the 39 with 65 across, so we get 39 sine 1.5t minus 0 0.395 equals 35. So dividing through by 39, we get sine 1.5t minus 0 0.395 equals 35 over 39. So at this point, I can find the inverse sine of 35 over 39 using a calculator and get a value. The inverse sine of 35 over 39 is 1.114. And looking at our cast diagram, sine is positive, so it's in the first and second quadrant, so that's pi minus the answer. So we can also do pi minus 1.114 to get a second solution and that is going to be 2.03. 
So that means we can say that this whole, the whole of this equals that, and the whole of this equals that, and solve for t. So 1.5t minus 0 0.395 equals 1.114, and 1.5t minus 0 0.395 equals 2.03. So solving the first equation, 1.5t add in 0 0.395, we get 1.509. And therefore t is 1.509 divided by 1.5, 1.006. There's our first solution. And our second solution, 1.5t equals 2.03 plus 0 0.395, which is 2.425. And therefore, t dividing through by 1.5, 1.617. Just put my units in here, so that's seconds and that's seconds. SQ High Maths 2017, paper 2, question 6, trigonometric equations. Solve 5 sine x minus 4 equals 2 cos 2x. So we've got a sine on one side and a cos on the other, not much you can do there. You're going to have to get it all over the same side and then make it all look the same, either all sine or all cos. So let's move the 2 cos 2x to the left hand side. So if I put it in front, it will be minus 2 cos 2x plus 5 sine x minus 4, and that would be equal to 0. Cos 2x is a double angle, so we can use double angle formula for cos 2x. Since I want to make it look all the same, I'll make it look like sine. So start of the exam paper, cos 2x is 1 minus 2 sine squared x. So I say minus 2 times 1 minus 2 sine squared x plus 5 sine x minus 4 equals 0. Don't know why I put a degree sign on there. Uh, expand the brackets, we get minus 2 plus 4 sine squared x plus 5 sine x minus 4 equals 0. Tidying it up and getting it in the correct order. 4 sine squared x plus 5 sine x minus 4 minus 2 is minus 6. No common factor there, but usually this will be factorizable, so let's double check. So this is like 4x squared plus 5x minus 6. So double brackets, nice and big. We're going to have something sine x, something sine x instead of x. And then it's a case of trial and error. It's National 5 work this, so revise National 5, factorising if you need to. But 4 sine x times 1 sine x gives me that. And then factors of 6, 4 twos are 8. 8 minus 3 is 5. So it's 2 and 3. So the outer ones, 4 twos are 8. That'll be plus 8. 3 ones are 3. Minus 3 is 5. So it's plus and minus. Take your time doing that if you have to. So you get two equations, you get 4 sine x minus 3 equals 0, or you get sine x plus 2 equals 0. So that means that 4 sine x equals 3, and therefore sine x equals 3 quarters. And the other side, you get sine x equals minus 2. And therefore, we can say no solutions for that one because sine x goes up and down to a max and minimum of 1 and minus 1. So I can just say no solutions. I can even say because min value equals minus 1. Okay, so the other one I can solve. So the inverse sine of 3 quarters. Use a calculator to work that out, but make sure your calculator is in radians because that's what we're working in at the moment. If you look at the range, so that is 0 0.85. And then our cast diagram, sine is positive, so it's pi minus. So I do pi minus 0 0.85. Again, just using a calculator or type 3.14, and you get 2.29. So just to tidy this up, x equals 0 0.85, or x equals 2.29. And one. Okay, composite functions, SQA, higher maths, 2018, paper 2, question 6. F and G are given by 3 plus cos x, and G is 2x. X is a member of real numbers. Find an expression for F of G of x and G of F of x. So part A, 1, F of G of x. That's F of, well, G of x is 2x. So every time I see a 
x and f of x, I write 2x instead. So that's 3 plus cos 2x. Nice and simple there. And for part 2, g of f of x. So every time I see g and I write f of x for x, and f of x is 3 plus cos x. So it's g of 3 plus cos x. g is 2x, so that's 2 times 3 plus cos x. And we can tidy that up a little bit by multiplying the bracket out to get 6 plus 2 cos x. And we're done there. Part B says determine the values for which f of g of x equals g of f of x. So just make them equal to each other. So for part B, we're saying that 3 plus cos 2x equals 6 plus 2 cos x. And we need to solve for x. Everything over to the same side to get cos 2x minus 2 cos x. And then we've got 6. 3 take away 6 is minus 3. That equals 0. So cos 2x, we can expand using the start of the formula sheet. We're going to use the, for the 2 cos squared x minus 1 form of it because we've all got causes for everything else. So that gives me 2 cos squared x minus 1, take away 2 cos x, take away 3 equals 0, or 2 cos squared x minus 2 cos x minus 4 equals 0. So 2 is a common factor in this case, so I can just take 2 out as a common factor to get cos squared x minus cos x minus 2 equals 0, and we can then factorise it because it's a quadratic. So it's two double brackets. We get cos x and cos x in the first place. Two and one. And we've got minus one in the middle. So it's minus two plus one. And therefore, cos x equals minus one. Or cos x equals two. So we've got two answers. But cos x equals 2 has no solution, so we can just write that straight away because the maximum and minimum value of cos is 1 and minus 1. So we just need to solve the other one. Cos x equals minus 1, so I can do the inverse cos of 1, which is 0 or 2 pi. But then our cast diagram, cos was negative. So it is pi minus and pi plus in these quadrants. X equals pi minus zero or pi plus zero, which is pi, or pi minus two pi is out with our range, and pi plus two pi is clearly out with our range as well, between zero and two pi. So it's just X equal to pi as our, as our solution. And we're done there. Trigonometric equations, SQA Higher Maths 2019, paper 1, question 15. Solve the equation sine 2x plus 6 cos x equals 0. And then solve a new equation for part b. So for part a, sine 2x plus 6 cos x, a sine and a cos, they're different from each other. So I'll expand the sine 2x to give me 2 sine x cos x. And this time we're working in degrees, plus 6 cos x equals zero. So although we've got a sine and a cos, there is a common factor, so I can factorise. So the common factor is cos x, but it's also got a number attached. Two is also a common factor, so two cos x goes outside. That gives me sine x in the bracket here. And two cos x times three is six cos x, so plus three equals zero. And then we've just got two equations to solve. We can say two cos x equals zero, or we can say sine x plus 3 degree plus 3 equals 0. This one gives me sine x is equal to minus 3, which has no solutions because the maximum and minimum of sine x is 1 and minus 1. So this one, 2 cos x equals 0, means that cos x also must be 0. You should know that cos x is equal to 0 at 90 degrees. If you don't, there's a little graph for you just to prove it. 1 and minus 1, it goes along 90, then 180, then 270. So we can immediately say that x equals 90 degrees. You could also say it's 270 straight away, but if you didn't know it was 270, cast diagram 
would give you the other one because cos is positive. So 360 minus 90 would give you your 270 as well. And we're done there for part A. Part B says, hence solve sine 4x plus 6 cos 2x equals 0. Part B, sine 4x plus 6 cos 2x equals 0. So part A was sine 2x plus 6 cos x. So the numbers in front haven't changed, so it's not a multiple. However, the angles have just doubled, so the frequency has just doubled. So that means that our answers to part A was when x equals 90 and 270. So now it's just 2x equals 90 and 270. There's no, no real extra work to do. So for part B, I can just say straight away, 2x degrees equals 90 degrees and 270 degrees. But I want to solve it between 0 and 360. So there's going to be more solutions in that because I'm going to divide my answers by 2. So I just add 360 to everything. I'll just write that here, plus 360. Then it's going to give me 450 degrees. And it's also going to give me 630 degrees. And then I can just divide each of them by 2 to get 45 degrees. To get 135 degrees. To get 225 degrees. And the final one is 315 degrees. And we're done there. 2019 paper 2 question 6. The wave function expressed 2 cos x minus 3 sin x in the form k cos x plus a. So if part a, quite standard stuff, 2 cos x minus 3 sin x. Expand the right hand side. That's k cos x cos a minus k sin x sin a. And you're just using the start of the exam paper to see that. So then we'll equate the sides. So look at what's attached to cos x on this side. I've got k cos a. And that's attached to cos x on this side by 2. And then on the other side, what's attached to sin x is k minus k sin a. And what's attached to sin x on this side is minus 3. Or you could have just written k sin a is equal to 3 because minus minus on both sides. Okay, so we don't really need that one anymore. So then we find our k. So k is, remember, the square root of the two numbers, 2 squared plus 3 squared. That's because sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. So that means that k is the square root of 4 plus 9. So k is the square root of 13. Now we need to find our a. So because tan a is sine a over cos a, and the k's will cancel when you divide them, then that means that tan a is equal to 3 over 2, sine over cos. So you just get your calculator and work out the inverse tan of 3 over 2. Inverse tan of 3 over 2 is 56.3 degrees. And we just need to check if we're in the correct quadrant. We should be because everything's positive, but just a double check, cast diagram, always checking from your cos and sine. So your cos was positive and your sine was positive, which means positive cos, positive sine, you're in the first quadrant, and therefore A equals 56.3 degrees. Now we just write it in the correct form, so it's root 13, and it was cos x plus A, x plus 56.3 degrees, and we're done for part A. Part B, hence solve 2 cos x minus 3 sin x equals 3. Just check, is this side the same as that side? It's either going to be the same, or it'll be a multiple of this, which means you do a multiple of that. It is the same in this case, so we can just write our answer equals 3 and solve. So for part B, root 13 cos of x plus 56.3 degrees equals 3. So all we need to do is divide by root 13 to get cos of x plus 56.3. So that is 3 over root 13. And then we can do the inverse cos of 3 over root 13. So the inverse cos of 3 over root 13, using a calculator, gives you an answer of 33.7 degrees. 
looking at our cast diagram one more time cos is positive so it's in the first and fourth quadrant so that's 360 minus so our second answer is 360 minus 33.7 degrees which is equal to 326.3 degrees now if our answer was just cos x here that would be as done but it's x plus 56.3 so we need to solve an equation so we can then say therefore x plus 56.3 degrees equals 33.7 degrees and that's our first answer and our second one is going to be x plus 56.3 degrees equals 326.3 degrees solving for x the first one gives me minus 22.6 degrees and the second one taking away 56.3 gives you 270 degrees so we can then say final answer x equals minus 22.6 degrees 270 degrees but minus 22.6 is out with a range where it was 0 and 360 so to get a f another answer we just take our lowest one and add 360 on so 360 on from minus 22.6 is 337.4 always check your range and when since that's outward for range we just disregard that one and that's our final answer we've got express 4 sine x plus 5 cos x in the form k sine x at a where k is greater than 0 and a is between 0 and 2 pi notice it's in radian so I'll just work in radians for this question and then we'll have to solve the equation okay let's do this so part a if I take k sine x and a, I can expand that straight away. Check the front exam paper if you're unsure. You'll get k sine x cos a plus k cos x sine a. So that means that 4 sine x plus 5 cos x equals k sine x cos a plus k cos x sin a well 4 sin x that's already got a sin x here so that means that k cos a must equal 4 similarly we've got on this side cos x and this side cos x so whatever's left k sin a must equal 5 Sine divided by cos, remember, is tan. So if I divide at this moment in time, we'll get tan a straight away equals 5 over 4. We should check which quadrants a is going to be in. And we can do that by checking our original equations. This is positive, so we've got cos a. This is positive, so we've got sine in a. That means that the tan of this will only be positive on A because that's a, about a, the one that's ticked twice. So we're using the first quadrant. That's nice and easy. So we can work out A straight away. A is the inverse tan of 5 over 4. 0 0.896. So we've got our A. Now we need to work out our K. But sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. So that means that 4 squared plus 5 squared equals k squared. So 4 squared plus 5 squared equals k squared. 16 plus 25 is k squared. So 41 equals k squared. Which means k must be the square root of 41. I'll just leave it as a cert. As long as it's simplified, that's fine. Or you could just square root 41 in your calculator and you'll get 6.4. But better off with an exact value. So then just to answer the question, remember the question was expressed in the form k sine x add a. So as k sine x add a, we've got k sine 
x plus 0 0.896. Question 3b, hence solve for sine x plus 5 cos x equals 5.5 for x between 0 and 2 pi. So we've already worked out what we've got root 41, sine of x plus 0 0.896. That's our left hand side and that equals 5.5. So we can divide through by root 41, so that the sine of our angle plus 0 0.896 is just 5.5 over the square root of 41. So we can work out if what quadrants we should be in with our cast diagram. So sine is positive, so we're in the first quadrant and the second quadrant, which reminder is going to be pi minus our angle. So we now need to work out our angle using the inverse sine in a calculator of 5.5 over root 41. If you do that in a calculator, you get 1.033. So in our first quadrant, that means that x plus 0 0.896, remember, equals 1.033. So taking away 0 0.896, we get x equals 0 0.137 as our first answer. Let's look at our second answer on our second quadrant. Remember that means that we've still got x plus 0 0.896, because that's our whole angle, but that equals pi minus, remember it was 1.033. So x must be pi minus 1.033 minus 0 0.896 which gives us a second answer of 1.213. So we've got our two answers for x between 0 and 2 pi. Remember, I was working in radians there. So for rated functions, SQA High Maths 2015, paper 1, question 4. The diagram shows the graph of a function y equals p cos qx plus r. So it's a trigraph. I write down the values of p, q and r. Okay, so we need to start off with what this function is. The normal cost graph, if you remember, goes between 1 and minus 1, like so, and it goes up to 2 pi. So the number in front is called the amplitude, then the period of how, the frequency, and then how far it's moved up or down. So immediately we can see that if we look at the Q first, we've got 1 up to pi over 2, which means if I was to keep drawing that, I would have 4 up to 2 pi, because pi over 2 is 90 anyway. So I can immediately write down that q equals 4, because I should have 4 of them up to 2 pi. Okay, to get our amplitude, if we just work out the difference between the maximum and minimum, I've got 4 and minus 2 is 6, so to get p, I can just do 4 to minus 2 is 6, half of that is 3, so I get 3. p is 3. And then for r, well, now, now I've got p, it's easy. If, if it was just 3 cos x, it would go up to 3, but it starts at 4, so I've added 1. So r is just equal to 1. And we're done there. We've we'll write down the values of p, q, and r. In other words, the function is 3 cos 4x plus 1. With the function is SBI High Maths 2017, paper 1, question 14. First part was a trig question, and then it moved on to having to draw a graph. So for part A, using our knowledge of trig, we have got root 3 sine x minus cos x, and we have to write it in the form k sine x minus a. So we expand that using the formula sheet. That's k sine x cos a minus k cos x sine a. Okay, so then we would, we would just uh, write, equate the parts to each other. So if we look at the sine x, first of all, we've got k sine x cos a, so that means that k cos a equals root 3. So I can just write that, k cos a equals root 3. And similarly, looking at the cos x part, which is over here, we've got minus k sine a equals minus 1. So we can just write k sine a equals 1. 
k sin a equals 1. So that means that our k, because sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1, gives us the square root of root 3 squared plus 1 squared. So that is the square root of 3 plus 1, which is the square root of 4, which is 2. So our k equals 2. And then to get your a, so to get our a, remember sine divided by cos is tan, so I can write tan a is equal to the sine, which is 1 over the cos, which is root 3. So that's an exact value for tan a, because we've got a right angle triangle, and if you had 60 here and 30 here, you would have 2, 1 and root 3. So the tan of 30 is 1 over root 3. We need to use a cast diagram just to confirm. So if we look at our cast diagram, we need to check our original functions. Cos was positive, so that would be these two. And sine was positive, that would be these two. So yes, we're in the first quadrant, because we're two ticks in A. So that means I can just say, therefore, A equals 30 degrees. And then our final answer is 2 sine x minus 30 degrees. And we're done there. So for part B, we have to draw the graph, but we've already put it in this form. So we're just going to draw the graph of y equals 2 sine x minus 30. So I know my amplitude is 2, so it's going to go between 2 and minus 2. And minus 30 tells me that it's shifted to the right by 30 degrees. So drawing a nice sketch of that, I can note on the y-axis the points 2 and minus 2. And then we're going to start at 30 degrees because we've shifted along. So we can just start drawing our graph and stop about there because it's not, it only goes up to 360. We can note our turning point. So normally it goes along to 90, but shifted to the right by 30 means that this point is 120. So 122. And similarly, this is usually 270 on a sine graph, so an extra 30 makes 300. So we've got 300 and 2. Uh, the other thing we could do is make sure you go back to 0, so you have to draw what's going to happen here. So it's just going to continue. We could know, notice where it cuts the y-axis. So it's going to cut the y-axis here, which is when x is 0. If you put 0 into this, you get the sine of minus 30, which is minus a half, times 2 is minus 1, so you could note minus 1 there. And there you go, you've drawn a sketch of the graph. You could tidy that up a little bit. Square so higher maths 2018, paper 2, question 8. So we're starting off with trig and then drawing or stating some values. So for part A, express 2 cos x minus sine x in the form k cos x minus a. We write 2 cos x minus sine x equals, expand the right hand side using the formula sheet, k cos x cos a. plus k sine x sine a. And then we equate our left hand side and our right hand side. So looking at the cos x first, the number in front of cos x on the left is 2. What's in front of cos x over here is k and cos a. So we can say that k cos a must equal 2. Doing the same with the sine x. In front of sine x on this side is minus 1. And in front of sine x on this side is k sine a. So we can say k sine a equals minus 1. And remember, to get our k, we just square both numbers and square root them. Why is that? It's because sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. So to get our k, it's the square root of minus 1 squared plus 2 squared, which is the square root of 1 plus 4, which is the square root of 5. So k is root 5. Now to get our a, remember, if we do sine divided by cos, we get tan. So we can immediately write down that tan a equals minus 1 over 2 and solve for a. It's not an exact value, so you get a calculator out to work out the inverse tan of a half. The inverse tan of a half is 26.6 degrees. 
So we're using our cast diagram to see what quadrant we're in and we're ready to answer. We need to check it from here, not here. We know that tan A is negative, but cos A is positive. So when cos A is positive, that would be these two quadrants. And sin A is negative. But when sine is negative, it's not these two, it is these two. So it's T and C. And therefore, it's in the fourth quadrant because I'm in two ticks in the fourth quadrant. So that is 360 minus the angle. So I can say that A equals 360 minus 26.6 degrees, which is 333.4 degrees. Now we've got our A and our K, so we can write down our answer as the square root of 5 times the cos of x minus 333.4 3, 3. degrees. And we're done there. Part B. Hence, so otherwise, find the minimum value of 6 cos x minus 3 sin A and find the value of x where it occurs between 0 and 360. We know that 2 cos x minus sin x we we'll just worked out is root 5 cos of x minus 333.4. So the minimum value of that function is minus root 5 because that's your amplitude. But this is now 6, cos, 6 minus 3. So in other words, this has been times by 3. So if I just write that underneath, that means we've got 6 cos x degrees minus 3 sine x degrees. Well, since that's been times by 3, I can just write 3 root 5 and the same cos of x minus 333.4 3, 3, 3. degrees. And therefore, our minimum value is simply the minus 3 root 5 because it goes between 3 root 5 and minus 3 root 5. I want done there for that. Part 2. The value for which it occurs where 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 360. So we're looking at this part here, which tells us that the whole graph's been shifted to the right by 333.4 degrees. So if we do our normal cross graph, you'll be able to see what's happening here. Our normal cross graph would go like this, and it would stop at 360. And the turning point here would be 180, but we're going to shift that to the right by 333.4. Now that's going to take us outside of our range up to 360. So if I extend this back, then this would be minus 180. So that's going to be shifted to the right by 333.4, which is going to take us into between 0 and 360. So if I just use that fact, I can just say that the minimum value occurs at 333.4 minus 180. So minus x would equal minus 180 plus 333.4, which is 153.4 degrees. And we're done there. To be clear, Master Day, we went through the whole of trigonometry for the Higher Maths 2023 exams. Hopefully you found that useful and helpful. Take care, stay safe, and goodbye.